Hi, my name is Timur Zaman from lineofcreative.ai. Today, I'm going to show you some of our best inventions, creative financing models, and both in, in equity and debt to help entrepreneurs succeed. So uh, at LineofCredit.ai, our hope, our goal is to help businesses access capital in amounts that traditional financial institutions or traditional brokers simply cannot meet. So I've got three programs today for this particular group in the, in the Whitby, Ontario area that I want to share with you. I want to share with you, uh, this is probably this three programs is, one of them is our marquee program, uh, but they're tailor-made. We only get paid on successful financing. There's no upfront fees or anything else that, that we charge. It's significantly different um, uh, programs compared to what traditional banks can offer or traditional brokerages can offer like that. Uh, it's tailor-made, uh, it's debt. Uh, so I'm gonna show you some equity-based uh, financing programs and then some, some debt financing programs. A little bit about me. I run a company called LineofCredit.ai. I'm also a partner in a venture capital firm called ABNX of Innovation, where we invest in primarily in technology, AI, and blockchain companies. I also own a real estate investment firm called Arcadia Group. I'm the author of the book, Hypergrowth, How to Connect to Customers Anyways, and I really love helping entrepreneurs who have a meaningful purpose in their business uh, create the changes they're looking to cause in the world by simply helping them on creative financing solutions. I like to do debt a lot, I like to do equity, I like to do debt and equity, uh, and I just like to really be flexible, creative, and help businesses achieve their goals. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about Rent a Rich Uncle program. Uh, in this particular program, what I do with an associate of mine is we buy courtesy deposits, uh, the short form for us called CDs, from banks. Uh, primarily North American banks in one condition, and that is for them to fund a client of ours. So imagine, picture yourself that you need a million dollars, as example, for your business. But when you go to your bank or when you go to a broker, whoever you go to, all you can qualify for is $300,000. But what you really need is a million dollars. So what we do is we go and we buy Curtis Deposits, the short form for call CDs, from banks, uh, Bank, of, uh, uh, Bank of Montreal, RBC, American banks like Bank of America. And when we go to that banking officer, we say to that bank, uh, Mr. Banker, I'd like to buy Curtis deposits uh, for amount that makes sense for you uh, to look favorably on our client's project. So let's just say, hypothetically, uh, you want a, a million dollars. And the bank will say, Bank of Montreal will say, for me to fund this client a million dollars, Timor, I need you to buy two million dollars of Curtis deposits from us. So we put up our cash, two million real dollars, it's not monopoly money, to the bank. And what the bank does is they lend our client a million dollars, but now the bank has a delta, has a delta of a million dollars left for them. And they use that delta to lend money to their existing customers new customers that add. So the additional money that the bank is getting, they're leveraging that money to lend it to their customers. And their new customers, existing customers, that million dollars that they give to their customers will come back with interest being paid. And they will lend that over and over and over, like 11 times. They will lend that over and over and over again to their clients. And they'll make hundreds of millions of dollars on that additional million dollar uh, of CDs that we had to buy. So our client, uh, a company or business that can qualify for $300,000, but they really need a million dollars, we got them a million dollars. That's something they couldn't do by themselves. The bank wins because uh, they now have $2 million of working capital that we're taking into their bank completely for free. They're not paying us to bring capital into their organization. They win. And then in our model, if the client goes bankrupt, if the client goes belly up, if the client defaults, whatever it is, We've never lent our capital to the to the client. Uh, we don't have to charge uh, shark fees or something like that. It's you know the the bank and the client get into an arrangement 
the bank is charging regular business, I don't know, whatever interest rates are, prime plus three, prime plus five, whatever, uh, from the bank, from the client. And uh, in our case, we simply get paid on the success of it. Our fees are uh, 6% of the amount of CDs that we have to buy. And uh, we can usually generally close in less than 60 banking days from the time a, a client comes in with a file, a business plan, a bank that they like to work with, to the time that we contact the bank, uh, put up the CDs, it's then less than 60 days we can in, come in and out. The condition for Rent a Rich Uncle program is that the CDs cannot, the keywords cannot be used as a, um, um, as a deposit or as a lien for the client's business. So the t CDs that we're buying have to be encumbered. I really like the Rent a Rich Uncle program. Uh, we do a lot of these transactions every week. A lot of entrepreneurs love it. Uh, you can be a startup, you can be a large business, you can be a publicly traded company. Uh, we can go up to three billion, that's a bit of B, billion dollars in the Rent and Rent Uncle program in terms of amount of CDs that we can buy. On real estate transactions or companies that have an operating line, um, you know, we don't have to buy two times the amount of CDs. So if you're looking for $5 million line of credit, we don't have to buy $10 million of CDs. We could, sometimes the bank looks at the transaction and says, Tim, if you buy $500,000 of CDs, I really love this deal. If you buy $500,000 uh, $500, of CDs, I'm good, good to go. So we only charge 6% of the $500,000. It, it's not the amount of line credit the client gets, but it's on the number of purchase deposits that we have to get. We love it. Uh, the additional fee to this, other than our 6%, is only and only and only if the client requires us to find the bank. So if you don't have the time to contact lending institutions, set up appointments with, uh, with uh, a lending officer and you want us to do the like work, now there's an additional fee to that. But most of our clients, generally speaking, have a bank that they love working with. It's usually the commercial division, not the retail division of banking that you're contacting and uh, it's simply do you like you know can you fund my business case if I bring purchase deposits into the institution. Uh, so that's the Rent a Rich Uncle program. The second program is our Money Multiplier program. This is primarily for entrepreneurs that want to uh, capture VC funding and you simply haven't been able to find that VC or you haven't been able to get the VC to sign an agreement like that and you're looking for equity financing as well as perhaps debt financing. So in this model, what we do is uh, we work with you and the venture capital firm that's interested in funding you. The venture capital firm is of giving you the money. So let's assume for a moment you're looking for $7 million. And again, I'm just using this as an example. The uh, venture capital firm puts the $7 million into their uh, lawyer's account, into their lawyer's escrow account, and we block that $7 million in the lawyer's account so that money stays there. We leverage it, we don't deplete it, we don't pledge it, we leverage it with our banks. Uh, and then we, we, we imagine I wanna buy a house, just imagine I wanna buy a house. So I go to a bank and I say, hey, Mr. Bank, I wanna buy a house, I've got 20% now, can you lend me the other 80%? So let's say on $7 million, I'll go get a line of credit loan for $28 million. And now I become the bank, the private lender, and I create a tailor-made program for my client so that we can fund the seven million or the 28 million, whatever the number is, to the client as an equity financing. And upon me getting the line of credit or loan, I return the money back to the VC because now the VC doesn't need their money. Again, this is another transaction that's pretty much within 60, 60, 60 banking days is in and out. So uh, let's say you have a bunch of friends and family who want to invest money with you, but they have not written you the check. Or you have a venture capital firm, somebody who's interested in giving the money, for whatever reason they haven't given the funding, and it's a post-COVID environment, people are, or investors are a little bit risk averse. In this model, the benefit for the investor or investors is that they're technically not giving you the money. All they're doing is they're moving their funds from their account to their attorney's account, that's it. In my case, what I'm doing is I'm blocking that money, I'm leveraging it as if it's my money, and there's obviously lots of legal paperwork that we sign here between us and the investor, 
we leverage it as if it's our money we borrow money against our credit line or against our assets from our banks and then we ask the entrepreneur how do you want that capital given to you and now then we create a tailor-made program to do that uh, for our clients the third one is the standby letters of credit and mirroring uh, I don't see a lot of businesses in Ontario uh, necessarily kind of following these programs, but it's definitely an up and coming programs. Uh, lots of real estate developers uh, will want to raise capital, and uh, what they can now do is instead of the REIT or the investors putting up capital, they can issue standby letters of credit. Pretty much what we do is we monetize the standby letter of credit, we liquidate it. And then we put it down as a down payment with, a, with a, one of our banks and we leverage it to get a two times, four times, six times multiples of that. And then that amount of capital is what we give to the entrepreneur and the entrepreneur has the right or the option of allowing us to retire or return back the capital that their investor or friends or family have, have blocked uh, kind of thing. Or the REIT has, has, has put up, uh, they get that back. Mirroring of funds is imagine uh, you have funds in a country like mm, Venezuela and overnight there's an election happens uh, the in this case the Trump administration may not like the Venezuela administration and they put a whole bunch of uh, blocks around trading in your in, in a country of Venezuela and you as a business owner have funds locked in blocked in Venezuela and you really don't know what to do with it Mirror Funds is a very unique service where we simply open up an account in a different legal jurisdiction. We set up a, pro a proprietary process in how we can mirror those funds from one legal jurisdiction like Venezuela, like Lebanon, like China or India. We simply mirror those funds from one legal jurisdiction to another legal jurisdiction and that way you have access to capital that was blocked any other way. My name is Tamar Zaman from LoveCredit.ai. I, I hope you find this uh, information helpful. I look forward to the opportunity of working with you. Thank you.